Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Praise God. I expect big things today. I release my faith in agreement with you. Big things are coming your way today. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I make a demand for my daily bread. Now say this, say, Lord, I expect big things from you today. You do not fail. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive them today. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, yesterday we began to talk about the most important thing. Praise God. Now, hey, when Proverbs chapter 8, we talked about this yesterday, saying wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And then we got talking about where you find wisdom. So yesterday I was sharing with you from verse 1, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, wisdom is crying out. Wisdom is standing on the hill. And that explain what that, that, that hill means. And then the so wisdom is standing at every junction. And that means every point you have to take decision. Whether you know it or you don't know it, wisdom is standing right there. Wisdom is standing right there. Every bad decision you have taken in life, I tell you this truth, wisdom was there. You're the one that didn't submit yourself to wisdom. See, every, I was describing that to you yesterday. I used the story of Esau. Though God had spoken, the choice of what made his life miserable were his own actions, not prophecy. Prophecy was spoken, yes. But you see, God will never force you to do anything. He wouldn't. We have seen in scripture where a prophet went to a king to the king Hezekiah to say, Look, set your house in order, you will surely die. And the man turned his face to the wall and said, No, I won't die. I don't want to die. And God said, Okay, 15 more years to you. We have a choice i'm not going now 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 what i'm saying is is quite sensitive i know but then we have to understand the scriptures and understand the mind of god it will help us know how god operates prophecies are to guide us but then i'll tell you this truth though if it is not a good prophecy those are the easiest things to change yeah, if it is not a good prophecy, it's easy to change it. I said they are the easiest things to change. Why? It will take just repentance to change an evil prophecy. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because, you see, God's thoughts concerning us, they are good and not evil. So God's final plan for your life can never be evil. If it is evil, it has a lot to do with your actions and the way you are going to behave. So someone wants to ask me, okay, so what about Esau that he said, you know, from the womb, I explained that to you yesterday. He just said the younger one will serve, the, the elder one will serve the younger one. He never said the elder one's life will be rubbish. No, no, that's what we have been made to believe, but it's, that's not what God said. Or maybe we should look at it so that you clear your mind and clear your doubts on that. Genesis. Oh, 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 oh. hallelujah. Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25 and verse um, 20 
1. Genesis 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. That's saying twins, right? And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Do you see that? Very clear words. He says, you are carrying twins. And then finally he says, the elder shall serve the younger. Now, apart from what society has made you to reason, there's nothing wrong with that. That happens in many families today. The fact that you are working for someone doesn't necessarily mean that person is greater than you. Jesus even said, the one who's greatest among you should be the one who served the most. I don't know how you reason these things out. But so, God did not cause, God did not cause Esau. He just gave the woman a clue of what's going on because because she, she felt this thing was too much on me. Let me go inquire of the Lord. And she went before the Lord. And the Lord spoke to her and said, Hey, this is what's going on inside of you. So I showed you yesterday how God gave both of them the same opportunities. Esau fell by his choices. And that's one thing we need to understand about life. Your choices. Because wisdom is standing at that very junction. I'll read verse 2 again, Proverbs chapter 8. She takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet. Where the paths meet. Every junction in your life. God is assuring you of this. Wisdom is standing right there. The question is, are you going to take advantage? Are you going to submit yourself to wisdom or not? Watch this. It didn't stop there. Verse 3. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. Hey, wisdom is by every gate you are about to enter into. Now, take it as a physical gate to a house. Wisdom is standing there. So, what does it say? When you're entering a place, when you're entering a compound, when you're entering a house, wisdom is by the gates. And wisdom is saying, now it says, she cries. She cries. She cries out. Hey, how are you going to enter this place? Would you need my help? That's what wisdom is crying. Would you need my help? And truly, you need the help of wisdom. So, when you enter a gate, wisdom is standing there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you're entering a city, wisdom is standing there. Entering a city means going into a new terrain, going to a new business. Going, it says, at that point where you say, I want to start this new business, wisdom is standing there. Not just standing and moping. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Do you need my help? I'm here. You surely would need my help. Wisdom is standing there. At the entrance of the gate, at the entrance of the city, at the entrance of the doors. Every door that opens up for you, wisdom is standing there. Watch verse 4. It says, to you, O men, I call. Ah, wisdom is not calling out to God. It says, to you, O men. Hey, hey, guys, you are the ones I'm standing here for. Praise God. To you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men, not to angels. So wisdom is for us. I come as I Look at all the places here. I say wisdom is stationed at the junction, at the high hill. I explain what that 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 meant. To at the door, at the gates, at the entrance of the city, and every door. 
Every physical door you enter, wisdom is standing there. That's why I told you yesterday, don't say, I don't know what happened. No, 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 no. All the checkpoints you passed to go do that wrong, wisdom was standing there. Wisdom was standing there. Oh, I was tempted. I don't know what happened. Something came over me and I stole the money. No. When you entered that door, wisdom was standing there. Now, what's wisdom doing there? Okay, so what drove you to steal that money? I had need for money. And I knew that money was kept there by somebody. So, I, I didn't know what to do. I decided, okay, I can st steal this money and they will know who took it. All right. Now, when you got to the door to enter where to steal the money, do you know wisdom was standing there? To do what then? To catch me or tell me, don't steal, don't steal. No, wisdom was there to tell me how to get the money that I need. Wisdom was there. If I had turned to wisdom at that time and said, wisdom, I need money. Wisdom would have told me what to do. Yeah. See, people live in wrong. People live in sin. Majorly. Because, number one, like I told you yesterday, the Lord told me, you have to take responsibility for your life. Number two, they are not sincere with themselves. People are not sincere with themselves. Now, as a, as a minister, or as a pastor, people come to me for counseling. And even when they are telling you things, you can see that they are not sincere with what they are saying. Most times they just say what they feel you should hear. Now, someone comes to you and is sharing with you, oh, I have this challenge. And then the person is trying to make themselves look good in your sight. If you are so good, how then did you get into this mess? And they are not accepting that they are in a mess. They, accept, they are telling themselves that somebody caused them to be where they are now. That's completely wrong. You have to be honest with yourself. And then you have to take responsibility for every action you have taken. Because they were your actions. No one took them for you. They were your actions. No spirit can move you to do anything. The spirit can only suggest to you. The spirit can only um, counsel you. But it is in your place to receive that counsel or not to receive that counsel. But in, even in that, there is something else that is available, and that is wisdom. So he says wisdom is in every place. Think about it. He's on the hill. The challenges that are ahead of you or beyond you, he's there. He's there. At every junction where paths meet, he's there. Wherever you need to decide A or B, he's there. At every gate, he is there. At the entrance to the city, wisdom is there. At the entrance to every door, wisdom is there. Doing what? Calling on every man. Hey guys, I'm here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you, verse 5. Oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. He calls out to the simple ones. Now, the simple ones are, he is starting from the lowest point. A simple man is a man as regarded as a fool. You know that now? Now, uh, those people who don't think, they, just, they don't think, they just, oh, come, let's go out. Eh, okay, um, let me dress up, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then they follow you and they go out. They are not asking, where are we going to? What are we going there for? Now, hey, this is the first thing wisdom is saying to the, to the simple ones. He says, all oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. What does it mean, understand prudence? Probe. Don't just accept everything they are giving to you. Someone gives you money. Oh, how did the person get that money? See? Why are you giving me this money? For what reason? Did I do anything? Did I, do you understand what I'm saying? Now he said, you simple ones, because you're the ones that most likely get into trouble all the time. So wisdom is saying, you see, now you see when he says wisdom is crying, wisdom is crying. He's not just saying, hey, no, he's telling you what to do. 
But the problem most times is people are not listening. That's why I titled this message the most important thing. He's saying, hey, you simple one. Yeah? Understand prudence. Understand prudence. Okay, sir. So someone is talking to you about an investment. Yes. It's the beginning of the year. Yes. Bring 100,000 naira in two weeks. You're going to get 400,000 naira. Wow. Look, this Mr. A got his own. Mr. B got his own. Oh, really? Excuse me. What kind of business do they do with that money? No, see, don't worry yourself. Don't worry. Your own is just, don't worry. You're not worrying yourself. Just bring your money. No, sorry. I want to understand something. If I bring my 100,000, what business really are they doing? Understand prudence. Hey, I, 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 I like you, okay? Maybe you're a lady, and then this guy comes to you and say, I like you. I just like the way you are, and I want to marry you. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ah, nobody have told me this thing for the past two years. Wow. Can we go out for only dates? Yes, yes. Ah, I've not even gone out for a date for the past two and a half years. Okay. Hey. Where are we going to? Why are you taking me out on a date? What's your plan? You simple ones understand prudence. Who and who is going to be there? Why did we choose this place for the date? Understand prudence. Understand prudence. Learn to probe. Learn to ask questions. If you don't ask questions at all, you just do things, you are a fool. You are the one who's calling. You are simple ones. I'm calling to you. Don't fall into those traps. You know, the Bible says, the wise man sees trouble coming from afar and he dogs. The foolish or the simple one, that's the word he is. The simple one walks right into it and they are trapped. Because they didn't see. They didn't probe. They didn't understand prudence. Our time is up for today. Praise God. I pray for you. Every trap that has been set against you in this month of January, wisdom will help you and you will escape them. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not fall into any. May the Lord have mercy on you and pull you out of the way before you get to that trap. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.